Welcome back to Tutorial Tidbits. I'm Elizabeth St. Hilaire and welcome to my channel. If you've not been here before, please subscribe or join my newsletter mailing list in the upper right hand corner um, to get this as a nicely packaged blog post in your inbox. Anyway, this week, this week, I've been having a lot of fun with my foam stamps, which are also on a fantastic sale, but only until the end of this week. So if you've got a few minutes, let's go check it out. Welcome back. So my new foam stamp designs with joggles are coincidentally and conveniently on sale until October 9th at 25% off. So because of that, I thought that I would share with you yet another technique I like to use with foam stamps that is creative and fun and colorful. So you can see that I have out my golden fluid acrylic paints and my gel plate. I've got uh, three foam stamps chosen for this effect and I've got some warm colors and some traditional peacock cool colors because I'm using my peacock stamp designs. Um, I've picked some opaque colors. Opaque colors means that they are not translucent, that they are not transparent, that you cannot see through them. And you can tell that from the tick marks on the front of the container that you cannot see the black tick marks here very clearly. You can see them under there, but for the most part, this is opaque and this is teal. Um, chromium oxide green is another color I chose for its opacity. You cannot see the tick marks under there very well. And also Naples yellow. You cannot see the black tick marks under there very well in Naples yellow. So these are three pretty opaque colors. Uh, the second colors that I chose are not quite as opaque. They're dairy light yellow. You can see the tick marks, the pyrrole red light, and also the phthalo blue red shade. You can't really see those tick marks. That be That is because of lack of contrast, the black with the dark blue. But this is going to be the color that I'm going to use to back it all up. So uh, I thought that I would play with a little bit of warm color with the cool colors for the peacock um, combo. Because what I want to show you is how to not just apply one color of paint to the stamps, but sort of an ombre kind of multicolor effect. And that's where the gel plate comes in and the two inch brayer. So I've got three peacock feather stamps and I'm going to use them to make a full page pattern. And I am using my very durable sketch rice paper uh, from Joggles. This um, rice paper is on a pad and it is very strong. It's not gonna rip easy and it's gonna take a lot of water and a lot of paint without any problem. You get a lot of rice papers online and you don't know what the thickness is of them and when you order them and you get them at home, they can be as thin as tissue paper. Uh, this is thick, durable paper. Also, it has a smooth side that is facing up in the pad and that side will typically pull all the paint off of the gel plate when you're using this for gel pr printing because of the smoothness of it. So I'm always working on the smooth side of this paper and I am never afraid to saturate it with too much water or too much mixed media because it's pretty sturdy and durable. And you're in luck, this sketch paper pad is also on the same sale at 25% off with joggles. So without further ado, let's take these three foam stamps. Let's do them one at a time and make three sheets of a full color pattern, sort of in a multicolor effect. So what I'm gonna do, how I'm gonna achieve that is I'm gonna put out some teal, I'm gonna put out some yellow, the dairy light yellow. I'm gonna add a little bit of Naples yellow to that dairy light yellow to see if I can make it a little bit more opaque. And then I'm gonna put the chromium oxide green in the middle. So I'm gonna spread this paint out a little thicker than I would for gel printing because I'm gonna be pressing my foam stamp into it. I need that to be a little thicker. I'm gonna take the foam stamp and press it across a couple of colors so that I get sort of an ombre multicolor effect. And then I'm going to stamp it on the paper. And then I can come up in the teal and sort of stamp that. And then I'll come back and do teal and yellow and get that here. And I'm going to keep moving around with my ombre colors and create sort of a multicolor peacock effect here rather than just one solid color. 
Now these line up uh, pretty nicely to cover the whole page, but they don't need to be perfect. But what I'm trying to create here is a sheet of collage paper because that's what I use all of my papers for the most is collage. But you could also use this paper for many different applications such as prayer flags or place cards for the holidays or note cards or whatever suits your fancy. So don't just be limited by what I'm doing with them. Think about how to create a full sheet of fun paper for other effects. So let's get some teal in here and I'm just getting these multi colors here. And now I've got pretty much a full sheet of these fun multi ombre colors of teal and green and yellow. So I've covered that smooth side of the rice paper. Now, in the interest of keeping the landfill from being filled, rather than using a baby wipe, I'm using a microfiber cloth with water on it. So a damp mi microfiber cloth, and I'm just going to get in here and get it as much clean as I can. And you know you can use a soft toothbrush to get down in the tricky areas of the foam stamp. But what's most important is that you clean off the surface. So if you want to do your part to save the planet, you can use a damp microfiber cloth and lieu of baby wipes and get the surface of the foam stamp pretty darn clean. I don't have any soap in this cloth. Uh, I don't think that's necessary, but you could add a little soap there. And so I've got pretty much the acrylics out now. So the next one I'm going to use now, I need to print this off. So let's take a scrap sheet and print off whatever's wet here still on the gel plate. And that makes for a great sheet to stamp on top of. Your cleanup sheet of multicolor is gonna be a great sheet to stamp on top of. And I'll show you that in a minute. But we're just gonna print off all that paint. We're also gonna print off some of it that's on the non-stick craft sheet here on my desktop. Some of it that went underneath. We'll see if we can get that clean. We don't wanna waste any paint, so rather than wipe it up with the cloth, let's see if we can pick it up with the paper. I love the idea of using all that paint and then I'm just gonna come in here with my cloth and clean it off the nonstick craft mat, which is pretty amazing and fantastic because you're always coming to a clean work service that's not distracting. So we've got that cleaned up. And now we're going to use another sheet of paper and another one of my favorite foam stamps. We're gonna use this one. And for this one, let's use the warm colors. So let's use some of the Pyrrol Red Light and the Naples Yellow and the Dairy Light Yellow. I'm gonna roll this off onto my cleanup sheet so that I can make sure my brayer does not have any green in it because you don't wanna have green or any cool color mixed in with your orange that will automatically dull it down. So you wanna make sure your brayer is clean. And I'm gonna start with that, then I'm gonna go into the Naples yellow, then I'm gonna go into the Dairy Light yellow and sort of make myself this red, orange, yellow ombre. And again, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna go across two colors, inking up this stamp or painting up this stamp. Then I'm gonna come into yellow. Then again, I'll come into the red. I'm gonna change the direction and sort of tuck them together. Come in here again. And I'm just gonna use this multicolored sort of ombre gel plate to give myself a variety of foam stamp colors rather than just working all in one color. And it is fun to go across the two colors. So you get two colors on one stamp like that. And that's where your two inch brayer is super helpful so that you can sort of keep the colors a little bit contained. And the idea is to go off the edges. So don't be afraid to go right over onto your desktop so you get a full sheet of collage paper. 
or paper for whatever your intended use is. So I've got that all off the edges for the most part now. I'm just gonna take my ghost print and make sure I get it all off the edges. So I've got this great sheet of warm colors in this peacock feather eye. And again, I'm gonna take that same cleanup sheet, I think, and I'll add the warm colors to it. And here we're creating something interesting to stamp on top of. Okay, so lastly, I'm going to use one more. I think this one is kind of fun because of the length of it. It'll be a little different than the two that we used previously that are a little bit um, rounded, sort of central in their composition, this one being long. So let's um, clean the brayer off onto my cleanup sheet here. I'm just cleaning everything off, all my colors off. And this time I'm going to use a little teal and a little chromium oxide green. And I'm going to also incorporate a little bit of this dark blue that I'm going to use in the background. And I'm going to blend that. So I'm going to stamp this across the colors, just like I did with the others. So here we have another great peacock eye feather pattern in multicolors thanks to the gel plate and once I wipe these I can always throw them in a basin of warm soapy water get them a little cleaner by running them under the faucet but I'm going to just make sure that I get the majority of the paint off with my microfiber cloth okay so the next step with these three is to Take the dark color and bleed it through the back so that we get a nice, rich, deep, dark background color and a fun, multicolored, ombre stamped foreground color. Now, this is going to absorb the dark blue that, that I used on this color. So I think for the background of this one, I'm going to actually bleed through the warm color. So we'll see. So I could do that right on my nonstick craft mat, but I'm going to do it on a sheet of palette paper so that I can move these to a different area to dry. So I've got some sheets of palette paper that are lightly used here. It's the palette paper that's shiny on the front side. You could also use a plastic garbage bag or some other non-stick surface um, that the acrylic will not stick to because we're going to let the paint dry on this palette paper and then when it dries it's all going to be stuck down but because it's got that plasticky surface it's just going to peel right off so you need to use a surface that the acrylic paint will not stick to when it dries so now I'm going to get a bucket of water and a paintbrush to soak the color from the back so I've got my collapsible water bucket and a couple of wide soft paintbrushes and I'm going to start with the first sheet and I'm going to go with the warm color to soak through the back so the pyrrole red light and I'm going to flip over the ombre stamp designs or the multicolor stamp designs and I'm going to set them on this side or this way on the paper and I'm going to put out a little bit of the orange paint and I'm going to get a lot of water and I'm going to brush that onto the paper then I'm gonna go with another warm color and I'm gonna grab that yellow, wherever it is, the Dairy Light yellow, and I'm gonna include that on the back as well. So I'm gonna turn this around, add some water. It's important that you add water and this soak through effect is only gonna work on rice paper. This will not work on book pages, sheet music, or copy paper because only rice paper is gonna absorb this color all the way through the core and out to the other side. So here we're just gonna brush in that theme of blended ombre color, we're gonna brush some yellow and some orange and then we're gonna flip this over. And because this rice paper is sturdy and it can take all this 
layers of brushing and texture and color, you're going to see that teal standing up so beautifully off of that orange and that yellow. The teal, the green, and the navy blue looking beautiful with that color, ombre color soaked from the back side. Also, I've got a few little dots here. I could flip this over and I could, I could press it in the dots of orange to soak through some of the orange. I could um, splatter some orange on top. Uh, I can do a lot of different things with this. You can see the paper. It's pretty, it's totally soaked through, but it's still very sturdy. But we're going to want it to dry flat on this palette paper. Look at how that teal really stands up against that orange. And I'm going to show this to you again when it's dry. But it is quite a nice color combo with the... Um, peacock ombre print and the background ombre. So the nice thing about this palette sheet is now I can set it off to the side to dry. I can bring in another sheet and my lovely orange and yellow ombre multicolored print. And this time we're going to go with the dark cool color, which is going to be this thalo blue red shade. And we could probably also mix in a little bit of teal. So let's put that out. We'll put the teal out and we're going to come with a wet and watery brush, lots of water, and we're just gonna soak it right through this durable rice paper. If you've made it this far in the video, you have to stay to the end, because in the end, I'm gonna line up all the papers for you, and you're gonna see all the fun stuff we created in the 24 minutes that I was printing, which is rather impressive. So, don't go anywhere, we're almost done. Now, if you use your rice papers, your printed papers and collage, you're gonna love how this paper tears and glues down. It's um, my favorite paper for collage and for gel printing and for soaking the color all the way through the middle. So let's put out a little bit more teal, a little bit more water. Let's bring that teal over here and sort of blend it in. We'll let that blue come through a little bit and I think we could use a little bit more of that blue and let's flip this over and see what we've got so we're, again we're going to pick it up off the palette sheet flip it over and look at the way that that yellow stands up and that orange pyrrole red light stands up over these dark colors with the ombre effect here I've got some of the color running over the front um, that wasn't intended Let's do that and let's take the blot some of that off the surface. There we go. And so we've got this, again, beautiful with the warm colors over the cool color bled through the background. And another effect you could make is to come back in with some of the navy blue and stamp some small line stamps on top. Um, I've got one that's kind of fun, that's sort of feathery, and I feel like we could um, maybe add that over the top. So I'm gonna set that here. This nice dark color from the back might be interesting, then stamped on the top. And we're working into wet here, so it's probably gonna bleed a little bit. Ah, look at that. So this, is, this works well because it's a thin line stamp. It's not covering up tons of what's underneath but we're adding another pattern to the top of this one and we're working into wet. So it's probably gonna bleed and blend a little bit. But here I've got, now I've added another layer by adding that dark blue thin lined um, feathery stamp onto the top. But look at how vibrant this yellow is. Even though we put the blue in the back, we still get this bright vibrant yellow, which I love with this bleed through the back effect. Okay, so that's two. Now our third one, this one, this one I think I wanna bleed through really the dark color 100%. So I'm gonna use the that nice deep dark thalo blue red shade. I'm gonna get uh, the brush with a lot of water. And uh, for this one, I'm just gonna use one color all the way through. So I'm making a, a nice, rich blue paper. A lot of water is going to soak all the way through the core of this paper, and it's not going to affect the color on the front 
the same way it would if we were painting over the top because we're coming from behind. Way to apply multicolors to one foam stamp. So we've got the blues, we've got the cool colors, we've got the warm colors, and we've got the combination of both here. So the combo, uh, this is another combo basically. And they're a little dark um, right now because they're, they're wet and they're not dry. So I'll share a picture at the end of them dry. But here you have another interesting way to use the foam stamps and the rice paper. So my favorite rice paper, sketch rice paper pad. And I actually have foam stamps designs. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, as well as the previous Van Gogh collection and the previous collection to that all on sale with joggles 25% off until October 9th, Sunday. Okay. So I've got the fan on drying the papers that I soaked from the back. But here's an example of how I stamped on top of my cleanup sheets to create a couple of new and fun and different sheets with the Peacock Foam stamp. So just using your brayer for a cleanup sheet and using a nice quality rice paper as your cleanup sheet instead of something um, like copy paper is gonna give you a really nice quality collage paper and it doesn't waste any paint that way. I hope you find yourself inspired and I hope you had fun and I hope that you will subscribe and be back here next week and I hope you'll enjoy your weekend. So happy Friday and thanks for being here. I look forward to seeing you next week.